All right, where are we? Miguel, how are we? So you're asking me to Yeah, but what did I talk about that? Spatial resolution is bringing us to spectral resolution. Are you okay? We're just digressing. But the topic really is on the raster, which is really about an image. That is why we bring in these things. In. You get it? So tell me, okay, please you come for a lecture to understand, to try and understand. You don't come for a lecture because you just want to hear. Are you on the same page? Now, there are so many advantages and disadvantages. So we are going to take them, and then I want you to take note of them. Is that okay? And uh, that's it. We, we're going to close the class on these advantages and disadvantages. It's all right. Go and when we meet again, I'm going to touch on map projection. Is that okay? Map projection. Today, we are going to just end the class on just the raster model. Are you okay? And the disadvantage and advantage. That's it. It's all right. Okay. So if you are asked any question, think through it and understand it. And be able to answer it. All right, so I'm going to go, I'm going to make it interesting, otherwise it gets boring. So it's going to be sort of some kind of true or false thing, because now you all understand what it is. So I'm intentionally going to be switching the statements when I ask you to say true or false, to show if you understand what I'm saying. Even though your, answer, your exam questions may not be answered. So. <laughs> okay, location of, so I'll start with them. Um, Chris, that's with you. It's okay. I hope you are ready. The location of each vertex does not need to be stored explicitly for a vector data. We just did it. All of you think about it. Anybody that gets the right, I won't ask you another question. I'll go to you. All the rest of you. So, the question is that the location of each vertex in the vector model, okay, does not need to be stored explicitly. This is English language. So, explicit. And that's correct. And, and give them a reason. Give us a reason. Because when we were joining the we are, we are writing them, yes. And every point we give it an X and a Y. So explicitly we are keeping it, the computer wants it, it wants the X or Y. Is that also? We have to store the location. Is that there are more coming, so relax. Is that Tony can wait. Like, are you taking this? Is that <laughs> All right, for if, this is for Tony. For effective analysis, vector data, must be converted into topological structure for effective analysis. True. So topological structure that means the things we do in topology, okay, has to be applied to your data. If it's better, be sure that lines are meeting where they are supposed to meet. I can that. And then you are not having an overshoot when you are supposed to. I you can have it connect as, like a T junction, for example. Is this true or false? It's true. It's true because we talk about it in class. It's true. It's true because if it's a T junction and you represent it like this, and topology says that lines only meet at nodes, it's not meeting it, it's not beyond it. Are you okay? You are telling the computer that this is my T junction. So you can do that analysis. You do an analysis, you realize that the calculations that the shortest path says you end up here. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Can you imagine if Google Maps is telling you keep going? Meanwhile, you see there's a there's a structure. Move forward, move forward. Are you okay? No, <laughs> because someone didn't really employ the right. Are you okay? And he's not really making the last correct. Are you in that? But you get the whole thing. So if it gives you a pipeline, okay, it will tell you that water can never get here. You know, water can, because this actually a T and it's just a representation. So when we go into digitalization, digitalization and those things, these are things that should be done. You need to work, sit down, correct data in a large place. 
the supplement with ECG that we have a lot of young people in the room working seriously with card data, correcting the things that are converting into GIS format. It's not shit for our format. All right, great. Next one, this goes for who wants to be the water? What's your name? <laughs> What's the name? Kofi. Kofi, take this one for me, okay? Kofi, are you ready for this? It's a nice one. I just like it. Algorithms. You know what algorithm is? Algorithms for manipulative and analysis functions are complex and maybe processing intense compared to the raster. This is true. Is that okay? It's not for you. Is that okay? No, no, no. It's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your question is that explain why. <laughs> now, this is more difficult than the first question. If I'm even asked you to say to your question, I know your question is explain why it's complex. But I think you mean you don't know that those are great. That's why I try to answer this question. Yeah. But why do you think it would be easier to um, create algorithms for analysis in Rasta better than the vector? Why? So, mm -hmm. so to, to obtain the data, we want to return the data. It depends on the solution to the data, to this to the answer is that. The structure of the two systems, one of them allows easily for you to write it. an algorithm. Yes, it's because the raster, yes. uh, it breaks down the cells to make it up. Yes, go, yes, go for it. Regular, yes. It's a regular square subway square. That's good. And because of that, it looks more like matrix. Yes, sir. And because it looks like matrix, straight away, it starts with. You know, and I, I this was the one. You get it, and that is why a lot of ladies like take this long here and they apply a filter to it. Filter is an algorithm. So, all right, great. Who's next? My man at the back. He used to contribute, but now you become very quiet. You know yourself. <laughs> okay, remind me the name again. Done. Yeah, done. Yours is coming, okay? Yours is about continuous data. It's all right. Continuous data. You know what continuous data is? Data that cannot, the value doesn't cut. It's not discrete. The opposite of continuous discrete. So, so discrete means that's it, 2.5. That's it. Continuous means 2.5, but there's 2.5, one less to it. Again, that. So if you want to define data, in a certain area for like for buildings like this, we are discrete. A building is like this, that's it. Okay. You can't be having buildings everywhere you go. So that's discrete. It's not continuous. Can you imagine if everywhere you went there was a building? That's a frustrating one. Okay. Then the concrete jungle will look more like some good pen, isn't it? All right. So your question is this continuous data, such as elevation data. Okay. Is effectively represented in vector form, two of it. Why? If Tony wants to take your, <laughs> you are lying. She told her to take it. <laughs> no, you can, you can trade. You can trade. You can trade. No, you can trade. Let me. You can trade so that you take the next one. Oh, Tony is just for it. Okay, do you want to go for it? If you are not in the spirit, let him take it. <laughs> are you the spirit? If you are not, you are here in the spirit. Let's, are you? You want to take it? Tell me. You leave it for me. Okay, you go for it. <laughs> okay. Continuous data such as elevation data is effectively represented in vector form. Those online, you can't take part in this, but they see what I'm doing. So last time, come face to face. We are not enjoying the class. <laughs> but they can say, 
it's true. I think I should just stop screaming. Someone, Kofi has given me an idea. He's <laughs> called Kofi. <laughs> okay, online people. Kofi has given us a nice idea. All right, Danny, do you want to go for it? Yes. It's continuous data such as elevation. Why is elevation continuous data? Everywhere you go. There's a, there's, a, there's a height. Okay, let's walk. There's no height here. Are you okay? The height here is infinity. It's deep. When you said, what are you going to do? You're going to disappear. You don't have a height above me to everywhere you go. Continue with it. Are you okay? All right. So you have it. You just have it. It's everywhere. Consumer data such as elevation data is effectively represented in vector form. True or false? But these guys, they've already seen the answer. So we shouldn't ask them. Let's reserve that one. So let someone here do it. So this is how you do it. Don't do the national Don't do that. Don't do the national if you want to get elevation, start with things like spot height. Are you okay? Elevation. Every engineer should know that. It's got to be some spot height. Mm -hmm. All right? Then you try to. This one is vector. Okay. That's the danger of this. What's the danger of this? The danger is that you are saying that. This is 34, this gap. What about this gap? So your data is, is a lot missing. If you're going to use this for design, it could be a disaster. Are you okay? Design may not fit because that's not correct. Everywhere there's a value. Are you okay? Everywhere there's a value. If you look at surfaces, eh? everywhere there's what? A value. For every surface, everywhere there's what? A value. If it's a temperature, Surface everywhere, there's got to be some temperature. In Russia, there is some temperature. It may not be what you like. What's the value around? Temperature in Russia is around what? Negative, isn't it? No wonder they don't smile a lot. Mm -hmm. This is not for YouTube. Anyway, so I'm sounding a bit rich here, right? It's just a bad joke, right? But so there's something wrong with this presentation. What would be the best way to represent it? I would have loved a lot of squares. Are you okay? In which every square had a value. Hmm? And that's raster. Are you okay? 12.8, 12 12.9, all the way to 33. Point, as approaching 34. Are you okay? All right. Then between this, there will be an increasing value. But every square will have a value. So everywhere I am, I'm going to have a value. Like I said, everywhere there's a value. That's the closest you get to reality is the raster in representing continuous data. But discrete data, I think that's my the high thing. Discrete. This is mass, actually. This the, the words discrete and continuous are actually mass concepts. Are you okay? We've got to do with um, real numbers. Are you right? I've done some mass. Have you done some algebra? <laughs> That, that's the application, but you don't want to. I, I don't All right, great. So let's move on. Special analysis taking the next one. I, I think, have you taken one? You're not taking any of these pills. I'll take it. Take it now. Special analysis and filtering within polygons. You take two questions. Special analysis and filtering within polygons is impossible, two of us, with the vector model. The special. Social analysis and filtering within polygons is impossible. True. Let me tell you what this means to the ordinary person I am today in today's world. Okay. If you make a sketch, hmm? if I make a sketch of you, can I apply for this? I mean, me, but I mean, I'm not getting it. If I take a picture of you, okay, I can now change it 
the current. I can change it to black and white with my phone. Are you okay? I'm, when I do that, I'm applying a filter. That's special for two. Are you okay? Sorry. The analysis, remember that it's not easy to do it the vector. Are you okay? The hydrologic analysis. Sometimes it's easy to do it. But with the raster, if I the things you can do with raster, just if your mother is your mother or your father is you doing it, you'll be very proud of me. Are you okay? Okay, but let's just take it like that. It's because of the inherent structure. Are you okay? That matrix that you can do a lot. Can do a lot. I, I've seen people apply a certain filter, your nose will become very big. <laughs> and it looks very funny and, <laughs> and your mouth small. I feel like, see us, the one you see, you go like, ah, how's it going on? It's very bad. Okay, guys, all that, what we just went through is the disadvantages of the vector model. Is that okay? Did you realize? Did you realize that? There are all disadvantages for the vector. You see that? Like, so we have got all the disadvantages of the vector become the advantages of the raster. So we are ending the class with advantages of the raster. Is that okay? All right. No, I think I think we should close. Where is it? Is that okay? Because it will be the same things we are talking about. Okay. One of the things that we should know is that which one of them is aesthetically pleasing. Rasta or Oh, easy. Yeah. Now who's going to give the reason? Five of you. What's the Who is going to now say our friends? Let me see. Profi, go for it. <laughs> Your name is the freshest in my head. <laughs> like a thousand days. Your name is on top. Go for it. Go for it. Profi, go for it. Mm -hmm. the, the Rasta. Do you understand aesthetic? Aesthetically pleasing. What does it mean? Yeah. One word, one word for that. Beauty. Are you okay? For cartographic purposes, what's cartographic? Mapping. No. When you're making a map, are you okay? So we are looking at beauty in terms of cartography. In other words, if you wanted to present a map to someone, would you present a master form? You go for better. You go for better. Why? Because you know, that's what's used. Remember, most maps are like you have maps in the street. You don't have to be worry about that used car tire that has been thrown in the roof, which is appearing in the raster, which is actually what every square, what is happening there. Vector doesn't do that. Just it's just the building doesn't care the roof. Things that have the shoes that have been thrown onto the roof. I'm talking about the Indian situation. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Who's watching on YouTube? Ah, but this meeting has ended. Are we there? Are you there? People, online people, switch on your mics, all of you. Come be online and yes, play yes. this professor yes. thing. Just switch on your mic. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question here. Is that okay? All right, sir. All right, so the first one goes to Daniel. <clears throat> Daniel, is it true or false? The geographic location of each cell is implied by its position in the cell matrix for Rasta. Is that true or false? So come again, the, line was the geographic location of each cell is implied by its position in the cell matrix. True or false? The next person will answer why. So answer, hurry up. You don't have to answer. Uh, true. Is that true? Is that true? Huh? Yes, sir. True. Okay, great. Next person. Yes, sir. True. Um, Augustine, why is it true? Augustine, if you don't answer this question, I will deem it that you were not part of this class. You were sleeping. <laughs> Augustine, go for it. Okay, so he's sleeping. James. Please take Augustine absent. We didn't take part of the class. James. James. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes. Uh, is it he said it's true that geographic location of each cell is implied by its position in the cell matrix? True, he said it's true. Why? Why is that? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, James. If you fail, don't call me. Real. Real, real, real. Are you there? Yes, eh? Yeah. Is it true the position, the geographic location Hello, of cell, the geographic location of each cell is implied by its position in the cell matrix? It's true. Why? Hmm? So you've not been part of the class, huh? I've just, I've got you guys. Just been sleeping, pounding for an order, isn't it? <laughs> Pearl. Pearl. Yes, sir. Okay, answer this question. The geographic location of each cell is implied by its position. The answer is true. Why? Its position in the cell matrix, the geographic location of each cell is implied by its position in the cell matrix. Why? I'm sorry, please, I don't know. You don't know, okay. That's good. Next person, Omari, where have you been? Answer the question. Omari? See, so online blended system. See what's happening. Let me give you the part of the channels. Yo, you just there sleeping on your bed, huh? You people. Okay, who's gonna answer it for us? Hmm. Huh? Yes, yeah, Miguel, try. Because you're presented by the row and column. So the cell is defined by the row and the column. So that is a position. So you said S and Y, but literally you are talking about row and column. Are you okay? Later on, you can map the row and column to the S and Y. So it comes the coordinates. Are you okay? Transformation. Are you okay? But that's what you have actually said. Because the rows are what? X's and then the columns. The columns are X's and the rows are Y's. It's interesting, isn't it? The rows are what? The columns are. The columns are what? Why? The rows are what? Yes. Where you are, row number two. The rows are what? Think about it. Put you a good discussion. The rows are what? <laughs> What's the vertical? You said they are vertical. They're not talking about vertical. They're talking about programmatic. Which is how these things are every this is y, this is x, this is a column, are you okay? This is a rule, are you okay? So we are talking the two are just 90 degrees to each other. Are you okay? In a matrix is like a zoom that we have that orthogonality. That's why I went on orthogonality appears in matrices something. Now listen to me, column row. So if I want to know how far from this way. Is it not the column that determines? If I'm at column six, is it not how far I've traversed this way? If I've gone this way, is it not the rule number that tells it? So the measurement is I'm measuring x to be the column, the column numbers determine the x. Okay, by the way, it's not part of this. So like, it's not, it don't come in exam. Like, don't, oh, don't worry, it's not that. But it's just an extra something you have to do. Guys, we end we we end here. Go and read more about it. the whole idea is to wait your answer. Let's get to know. Are you okay? All right. So please, those online, I treat you that when I teach, pay attention. I don't want you to fail. It's okay. I don't. Want, if you want to fail, I'll help. It's okay. If you push me, <laughs> I wish you the best. Though, and uh, we meet in two weeks. Are here? All right. So I wish you the best in your mid -set.